You may be wondering, why have a Budweiser glass for a British beer? Well, AB and Bev? AB and Bev, right? Something like that. I never know how to pronounce their name. Yeah, AB and Bev owns this beer. I'm reviewing this beer because it's imported. That's why. It's not craft, it's imported, and I love imported beers. So, let's get on with it. Beer, 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 beer. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to me, Maple Ruski, for the Ruski Ruski Review. And today, the beer I have for you is Boddington's Pub Ale by uh, by Boddington's slash AB and Bev, because they own it. This is their Pub Ale, 440 mil can, coming in at 4.6% alcohol by volume and an unknown IBU. It's not listed on the can. Not listed on Untapped, and finding a website for this beer is quite, quite hard. I just found something on a different website, which we'll get to in a bit. But looking at the can, black and yellow, Wiz Khalifa would love the shit out of this. Really cool, some honeybees on a, on a, on a barrel there. Kind of neat, kind of neat. And some red accents as well. Imported from bleh, Imported from Britain. And there's a can pouring instructions because it has a draft flow system apparently. Um, and there's a little something in here, like a ball. Probably not a ball because Guinness is, um, I'm pretty sure, has copyrighted that or trademarked that ball. And it's a draft flow. So I'm not sure if it's a nitrogen charge. We're going to crack it open. It might be nitrogen charged. It doesn't say. And I'm not too sure, so we're gonna pour it like a nitro beer, I guess, into this glass. I wanna move it away from the edge. I just broke one of my glasses, and that's not fun, and we're gonna pour now. I don't think it's nitro charged. I don't know. It's kind of. I don't know the way it cracked and the way it's cascading down here. It could be. I don't know. I really don't know. It doesn't say. It says draft flow. And I've never heard of draft flow, but I heard the, the, the just everything shoot out of it. And there's the ball. It sort of makes sense. It's nitrogen charged. And the head on top looks like it could be nitrogen charged. But yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. This beer is brought to you by, actually not brought to you by, brought to me by uh, by my uh, godfather, my uh, Uncle Viv. <clears throat> so, thank you, sir. Looking at the beer, it's a very, uh, it, it looks like a lager color, slightly uh, golden yellow, very, very clear. The tiny little bubbles are just floating ever so mesmerizingly in, in the glass. Nice little bit of a white head on top, a little bit of a white cap. Pretty cool looking. Looks very um, dense in 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 the uh, in the head, just like a just like a nitro beer would. So it doesn't say. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure. We're gonna have a smell. Not too much coming off the smell. A little sweet, like honey sweet, some caramel or light light toffee. Some nice sweet bread, like a, like an egg roll bread. Some just other nice sweet flavors coming off that. A little bit of like a syrupy sweetness. It smells a bit slightly yeasty as well. Let's have a sip. Light. Touch of honey. Um... Moving into that slightly corn, creamed corn almost. And then, yeah, moving into uh, that sort of like uh, sweet egg roll or uh, sweet bread sort of flavor. It's not too bad. It is super flat. And that leads me to believe that it is somewhat nitrogen charged or has nitrogen in it. That adds more um, evidence to it. But it doesn't say. Or I haven't read enough to see that it does. It just has that um that draft draft flow. The ingenious draft flow. 
uh, system. Kind of cool, kind of cool. But yeah, really creamy mouthfeel. Let's keep drinking. Cheers, guys. Really creamy. Nice little, like, very, 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 very slightly sour, bittery, yeasty finish. But super, super smooth. That's because there is no carbonation in here. Or a very, very minimal, very minuscule amount of carbonation in here. <clears throat> I don't see any bubbles really rising. It's just nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, with nitrogen charged beers or beers that are um, uh, really, really flat, <clears throat> make me always kind of confused in a sense because usually you're you're drinking a beer and you're expecting carbonation and to feel the bubbles, um, as Aaron used to say, um, and a bunch of other things. But when it's flat, it's it's weird to me. I don't know. It just feels it feels unnatural. It feels awkward. Like I'm drinking something that's gone bad. Um, kind of, you know, like, th th does that make sense to you guys? Because usually when you have something that's supposed to be carbonated and you leave it out, then it goes flat and then it tastes off. That's sort of where my mind goes just because of, like, memory and what I'm used to. <clears throat> that's what really throws me off on these, on, like, the nitrogen-charged beers and whatnot is uh, that that's what it does to me but this is actually quite delicious I mean it's not huge big bold flavors but then again even when stuff is nitrogen charged it seems like the flavors are sort of uh, pulled back sort of toned down quite a bit and that's sort of what I've realized with, uh, with these beers that the, the, like, the nitrogen charged stuff is that it, everything's toned down a bit <clears throat> And it feels like I'm not getting the full flavor, um, but that that's just the style. That's really what it comes down to, is that that's, that's just the style. But it looks pretty. I like the nitrogen charged beers because the head stays longer, but it's also really, really thick. Really, 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 like, very tiny bubbles. As you can see there, it just looks really cool. And it holds on the glass quite nicely. And it's creamy. It's so smooth. But it's there's a lot of like differences between regular beers and nitrogen charged beers or this um, in ingenious uh, draft flow system. But speaking of the draft flow system, let me just put the rest in here. Get it all out. I don't usually do full beers, but today was an exception. <laughs> I kind of want to see what that ball looks like. Can't really see it. Check it out after. But yeah, we're going to read the can because let's read about this ingenious system. So, Boddington's Pub Ale. 440ml can, 4.6% alcohol by volume, unknown IBUs. On the back, Boddington's Pub Ale. In British pubs, uh, in British pubs, Boddington's unique pale gold ale is served by the traditional hand pull method which produces a distinctive creamy head, smooth body, and a little grassiness. The ingenious draft flow system uh, means you can now enjoy the same creamy head and fresh taste of Boddington's Pub Ale from a can. For best results, serve cold, but not ice cold, 5 degrees Celsius. Carefully open can and pour contents into glass, which I did. I carefully opened the can, but I did a pretty harsh pour. Wait for the head to settle on a perfect glass of Boddington's Pub Ale, and then enjoy the smooth taste. Warning, this can contains a pressurized insert. Do not tamper, even when empty. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> and then it says that in a bunch of different languages. Good for you, being easy to read for multiple language people. Does that make sense? No, but that's okay. Uh, refund world pickable, blah, 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 for customer service, blah, 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 recycle, don't drink and drive. 
pretty general stuff. On the bottom, there is a best before date, which is awesome. It's AB and Bev. You, I, I guess i very confused. I like to see that, though. Okay, on the bottom, this beer goes bad by March 2019. So, got a little under the under year to enjoy them. Uh, I got three left in the fridge. It's my first time having it, and it's, it's not too bad. Actually, really nice can. Great description on here uh, of how to enjoy the beer, and also something a little bit about the beer. Um, brewed on date, best before date, perfect. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Like I said, brewed in the UK and distributed by AB InBev UK Limited. Um, and that's out of uh, Lutton, England. UK Limited, comma, Lutton, comma, England, Angleterre. I guess Ang angle tear is the, the French way of saying it, I guess. Kind of cool. This is, I'm sorry, it's something new for me. That's what I like to do. New and adventurous stuff, and this is new for me. This is a pretty good beer. Nice little bit of yeast in this. Like I said, the egg roll. Honey, slight caramel, even slightly syrupy, but everything is just toned back a bit. And there's a lot of, with that said, there's a lot of wateriness in there, which just comes with the style of it. Uh, and that, that helps everything seem to be much more toned back, drawn back on the flavor, uh, boldness of it, which is a bummer because they're great flavors. I just want them all. And I kind of want some carbonation in this, but for what it is, it's not too, too bad. Moving over to the website that I did find about Boddington's is on www.handfamilycompanies.com. It has a big, long description of uh, Boddington's, which was founded in 1778 by Thomas uh, Keister and Thomas Fry. Hmm. Um, in 1832, Henry Boddington joined the venture as a traveling salesman. Um, and by 1848, Boddington, oh, Henry Boddington had become a fully fledged partner in the operation. Hmm. This was originally under the Strange Ways Brewery. Um, in 1853, Boddington borrowed money to become the full fledged, uh, to, sorry, to become a full-fledged partner in the operation sorry in 53 sorry he had enough money to become the breweries that the brewery sole owner oh okay and increased and in 1877 increased output of 10,000 barrels to over a hundred thousand barrels in a year wow hmm very very neat when was it acquired by it doesn't say when it was acquired but also, this is weird. Some of the information is a little um, different. They're saying Bonnington's, as uh, Bonnington's Brewery, um, which in, in, in its form here, was founded in 1853, and then ceased operations in 2005. So it's hard. I've been trying to find information about this, but I'm not too, too sure. And it still says the owner is AB and Bev. Um, I'm not sure when that happened. Okay, so AB and Bev bought this brewery in 2000. I'm just really confused because it's still being brewed in 2018. But it went defunct in 2005. But was bought by AB and Bev in 2000. Unless the original brewery went to function in 2005, and then they still make it somewhere else. I don't know. It's a lot of... It's a mystery, and I don't do tons of research on the breweries uh, when I drink their beer. So I'm a little confused. Anybody that knows more history about Bonningtons, 
let me know down in the comment section below because I would like to know because right now I'm really confused. I'm confused about the beer. I'm confused about its history of the brewery and I'm, I'm just overall confused. All I know is that it is quite delicious. Um, it's just not my style kind of thing but it's still pretty damn good i love the mouthfeel the mouthfeel is super creamy super light there's also another flavor in there i think it's like the honey syrupiness mixing with like some yeastiness yeasty breadiness and uh slightly souriness that is giving me some sort of different flavor and i've had that flavor before but for the life of me i can't figure out what it is but finally moving over to untapped the Pub Ale by Bonington's Brewery has been given a drink. <coughs> has been given a 3.38 bottle caps out of 5. And that's out of whoa, over 110,000 ratings. So a lot of people have had this beer since it was added in 2010. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. Wow. But yeah, definitely a different style of beer. It wouldn't be my first choice. But for um, for nitrogen charged beers, quite nice. Choosing the final set, let's get right to ratings. Now, with this beer, really good flavor, really great mouthfeel. I just want more of the flavor and uh, maybe some carbonation, but that's just, this is, that's just the style of it. And it's not bad. It's got some good flavor for sure. Um, I'm really debating, you know, it's not my favorite. It lands like a 6.5 for me out of 10. Um, just because of the style. It's not my style, but it is very well done. But I got to leave it at that 6.5. As for presentation of the can, you know, good description, no ingredients listed, no IBUs listed either, but I want to put that at about 10 to 15 at the most, but I do like the best before date clearly labeled on the bottom of the can. I think that's awesome. Presentation, it's a solid 7 out of 10 for me. With all that said, guys, if you have any comments, questions, or beers on review in the future, you can leave all that information down in the comment box below. If you want to go ahead and like this video or subscribe to me, Maple Ruski, that'd be greatly appreciated as well. Again, I want to thank you, Uncle Viv, for picking this up because uh, it was definitely a great experience to have. I'm going to enjoy the rest for sure. And yeah, thank you for the beer. Well, with all that said, guys, that's going to do it for me, Maple Ruski, and like I always say, crack a beer and enjoy. Cheers.